What's up guys and welcome to Kickback and Chill. And today, Friday, August 26th, Grammy Award winning engineer Ashby Mix is in the building to discuss his journey as an engineer. Live from Midtown, New York City. So kick back, relax, and have some fun. Let's kick back and chill starts right now. Hi, my name is Michael Ashby. We're here on the Kick Back and Chill show with Day, and we're going to talk about audio engineering and what it entails. Okay. That's good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, cool. um, so Ashby, tell me um, what made you want to get into engineering, being that there's so many avenues people can go down mm -hmm. within the music industry. What made me get into audio engineering was the way I had a fascination with hearing myself back on the drums. I wanted to hear myself back, third person perspective. What do I sound like to someone else that's not inside my body? And then before I know it, I got obsessed with the sound of the recording um, and then went from drums to vocals and then obviously from vocals to people that and my school wanted to record and spit a little something, they started coming and I got practice on vocals with other people and so on and so forth. It just kept evolving. That's literally it. <laughs> so tell me a little bit of the difference between an engineer and producer. Cause I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. there's two different things, even though they do help make the record, mm -hmm. you know, as perfect as possible. So, in the simplest form, an engineer versus a producer is um, someone that's dealing with all the technical aspects of a song, um, operating the equipment, the software, the boards, um, and that kind of is fused into a creative situation because we're working on something creative, but it's all things technical to do with the creativity um, and a producer more deals with what he or she wants to happen on the record creatively, like the movie director, for example. But the movie director does not edit the, exactly. So movie director is more comparable to producers in the music realm and um, engineers are more comparable to like the, the film editing crew and um, you know, the post-production process afterwards, usually. It sees that you, I see that you went to SAE Institute. You know, tell us how you know going to school really helped you shape you into the engineer you are today. Because you work with a lot of artists now. Yeah. Um, so school basically taught me how to be very disciplined and um, efficient in what you do, um, and that time matters. And if you could do it within a certain time frame or by a certain deadline, they really help. You know, with that type of um, because I came into school kind of already knowing. Um, to a certain extent, um, most of the, mo <laughs> I already came into school for the most part knowing what to do because I was already working with people before I even went to, you know, started class. But class has really helped me sharpen up, like, you know, the aesthetics of it and just making sure I know the ins and outs of a patch bay and, you know, I don't want to make it too long, so <laughs> I would get into detail. I could get in more details, but I'm just, you're fine. I like it to be generally like, okay, that makes sense. Cool. And don't keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, yeah. um, talk about, you know, I I'm so curious. I kind of want to be a little nosy. Talk about how the Cardi B situation come came about. You won an award. Congratulations mm -hmm, on that. Thank you. Talk about, you know, how did you guys connect? So with Cardi, uh, I started working with her when I had a call one evening. I was already working with multiple people and I had a call saying, we need an emergency session. Um, and it wasn't from Cardi, it was from her ex-manager at the time um, saying, you know, we need to come in. Um, we would like to work with you because um, we heard of you through someone else that has worked with you before. So I was like, okay. Um, I didn't know it was Cardi until she came in, but um, when she came in, luckily, I mean, I didn't even know who she was at the time still because, yeah, she was blowing up on Instagram for being funny, but she didn't, she wasn't on the show yet, but she was on the show one time, she was on Love & Hip Hop like one time before, then when she was on Love & Hip Hop again, that was when I knew her, but before I met her, like, 
I didn't, I hardly recognized her because I didn't think it was the same chick from that show that was like in my basement. But long, long story short, word around the streets was um, people was already, my name was floating through word of mouth promotion. So um, it was kind of like a clientele, clientele referral. And um, that's basically how I started working with her. And then after that, we worked on uh, Gangsta Bitch Volume Number Two. Most of the songs that was done on that was recorded at my crib, and sessions in between my crib was done with the other engineer that we that was on the team as well. Um, so it's been majority of the songs there, and then I've worked on a single after that after that mixtape, and then Bodak Yellow came out because we did a soft single before Bodak Yellow. Um, she did looking like I caught a lick, um, but that song wasn't even like it wasn't even all of that to me really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Word, it really wasn't. It was just like okay, she's getting buzz. Let's go with the buzz and give them a single. You know, see how it do, um, and then give them another single. See how they do. So she did like I think around that time, red bars. I didn't do red bars, but um, that was you know uh, uh, in the running. And then Bodak Yellow, and then after Bodak Yellow, she came back to do, one of the last things she came back to do before she switched management with me, Ghost, was um, <clears throat> Motorsport, the song with Cardi, um, with Nick, with Nicki and Migos, yes. So um, that song she did, as we all know, they recorded their part separately on that record. Um, so. Cardi did her part with me in Long Island and Migos did their parts wherever they did them at QC and um, Nikki did her part with her guy Big Juice who I also know, he, shout out to Big Juice um, and um, that, then it all came together basically and that's how we record mostly in the industry nowadays. We send things over the internet and we record them in our various places. Yeah. Started creating a buzz, you know, in these streets. You know, I'm pretty sure you probably faced some challenges in the beginning of your engineering career. Mm -hmm. Can you possibly tell us what are some, you know, challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? Um, yeah, like um, there was challenges where people wouldn't really know your worth yet, so they try to lowball you and like. Um, yeah, they try to <laughs> get depreciate use any and everything to depreciate your value when they don't have anything like credits in the way to kind of like, you know, and that's kind of like shallow because that's like the person failing to like use their own ears to listen and judge for themselves. They just really feel like they kind of have to go off of what somebody else says or co-sign. Which is like, that's normal, yeah, but at the same time, you know, we're dealing with music and sonic frequencies and sound. And with that, you know, there's only one answer. It either sounds good or it doesn't. So, and because everybody was coming to me because things sound good, you know, it's just unfortunate that some people coming to me would try to lowball you, you know, 